Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got a 25 minute workout that's gonna help you burn off those extra Christmas cookies that you had. And you can do it right from your Christmas PJs. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance, which includes little workouts like this. So jump on it. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into this one. Alright guys, as I said, today's workout is going to be 25 minutes long, of course, in honor of Christmas. And we're going to be doing every minute on the minute. Now before we jump into the workout, just know this, I don't condone using exercise as punishment for eating Christmas cookies. You should be able to have self-control enough that you can eat those cookies and happily enjoy them with more consistency in your nutrition on the outside of the irregular things such as holidays and birthdays and stuff like that, which I know there can be a lot of those, but you still have to exhibit that self-control. I hate to say it. So this is not a form of punishment. It's simply a nice workout for you guys to enjoy, get yourselves moving, and to really feel those muscles engage and get a little sweat going here. The format of the workout is 25 minutes long, every minute on the minute. So we're gonna be doing 25 different exercises here, one per minute, and I encourage you guys to rest as needed in that minute if you cannot make the full minute on these exercises. Things are gonna start burning like your shoulders, your abs. It's gonna be a good full body workout for you. All body weight, so all you need is a mat, nothing else other than that, other than maybe a water bottle, and you are good to go. So without further ado, let's start burning some Christmas cookies. Here we go. All right guys, we're gonna be starting off on our backs here. We're going with a dead bug full extension. You'll see that there's a timer in the bottom left corner of your screen so you can check and see how many seconds are left and if you need to take a break or not, or if you can push through those final seconds on each one here. What we want is our low back pulled into the mat in this dead bug. So we're pulling the abdomen, getting that spinal into a little bit of flexion position in the lumbar spine, pulling flat. As we extend out, we want to get those glutes engaging tight and the quads engaging to help extend that leg fully. The arms are moving from the ball and socket of the shoulder. We don't want the scapula going anywhere. So we need those shoulder blades rolled down and back, making sure I'm not shrugging at all in this position. So my back is completely fat, flat to the mat and then fully extending out with the engagement of the quads, glutes and nice tension there. Five seconds, finish out strong. All right, next, we're gonna be going into a glute bridge here. So pull those heels as tight as you can to your butt with a nice flat foot, three points of contact from each foot. So the first metatarsal, the fifth metatarsal, and the heel. Every time I'm down on the mat, I want my low back flat to the mat once again. This is ensuring that I'm not arching my lumbar spine, so I keep the abs engaged throughout. And it should always feel like I'm coming back flat to the mat each time I lower down. And the top position, I need the glutes fully engaging. And in order to do that, I need my hips driving high and my knees driving apart from one another. So I'm pushing directly down through the ground, knee over ankle, and driving high and wide with those legs there. If you feel like you need to adjust at all, do that. Roll the shoulder blades down and back. Make sure we have a good, strong upper back position as well. And you're driving those elbows into the floor to stabilize. Five more seconds, and then we're moving on. All right, from here, we're gonna to transition to a bent knee side plank. So we wanna be knees at 90 degrees back behind us. My top leg has the foot planted, so it's down on the ground there. And my shoulder is rolled down and back so that the shoulder blade isn't sliding up into my neck or ear here. It almost should feel like you're leaning a little bit angled up toward your ceiling. But we wanna keep a nice straight line. You'll notice that I'm lifting my hips off the ground here. My glutes will be working pretty hard to drive the hips high and once again opening those knees wide to get all the glutes engaging and also engaging the obliques in this position here and we're just holding find a good spot that feels relatively comfortable where you can hit hold those hips in a good position keeping the obliques engaging here 10 more seconds finish it out
All right, switching sides here. Once again, shoulder, shoulder blades rolled down and back, a nice firm armpit. Hips are high and knees are wide. I'm driving through the floor with that top leg as the inside foot or bottom of the foot of the other leg is touching it and the knees are pulling apart. Lifting the hips up so that the obliques are engaging and then angling myself toward the ceiling some so I'm almost leaning back here. Our key here is hold tight from those glutes, keep that alignment of the core and just breathe through. About 30 seconds left, do your best. All right, next we're gonna be going into a bear crawl position. Roll the shoulder blades down and back, bring the knees so that they're a little bit below the hip. You might have to find that positioning. And we want the knees to hover just off of the ground here. My elbows are rotating in toward my thighs. My knees are actually pulling open. So once again, I should still feel my glutes in this positioning. We don't wanna over activate the hip flexors too much if we can get by. So abs are engaging here to hold this bridged position, making sure that I don't have an arch in my lumbar spine. If you can imagine yourself holding a glass of water on their low back in this position, that is the tabletop position that we want here. Hold strong, 15 more seconds. All right, for our next minute, come to standing. We're gonna do a squat with a pause in the bottom position. So for our squat, we want three points of contact from each foot, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, and heel. When I lower into that bottom position, I wanna start with a small hinge from my hips. So I reach my hips back and then drive my knees wide. You can see that nice angle here from this angle. It's the knees in line with the middle or even the smallest toes that's giving me a nice base to work from here. Pause in that bottom position, feel that bottom depth of your squat. And if you need to hold on to something to get that depth, go ahead and do that for right now, even if it's just one hand to kind of assist with the balance. A lot of times it's our ankles that kind of throw us off if we don't have ankle dorsiflexion and we can't get that full depth. But it can also play in our hips here. So depending on where you're at, use something to hold on to if you need to, to get that depth and hold that bottom of the squat. Next, we're going to transition forward here into what's called a shrimp squat. So if you still need to hold on to something, go ahead for balance or for strength purposes to assist with the upper body. What I'm doing is alternating legs here, once again trying to plant my three points of contact from the foot, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel, and then I'm trying to tap my shin or knee, even better knee if I can, to make it a little bit harder. And touch the mat and drive back up using all single leg strength here. So alternating those legs, the base is really important here, making sure that we have a good solid base and we're not gonna let our knee cave in toward that big toe. This alternating step really helps with that some because it helps put my hip in external rotation as long as my body doesn't turn on me. And you can see my body fighting that a little bit in the balance in this video here. All right, from there, step back to your mat. Take a nice wide stance here with the legs, and we're gonna do a Cossack squat. So what we wanna do is reach the hips back, open the knee of the leg that we're shifting toward, and roll to the heel of the opposite leg so that we're engaging the hamstrings on that side. Now you will have a decent torso lean in this Cossack squat, and that's okay. Usually we need a counterweight out front to help get a little bit more vertical in this positioning. So don't worry about your torso lean, that's natural here. Try and come back to full standing in between each rep as you shift from side to side here. The knee of the leg that we're bending needs to be in line with the middle and small toes, just like our regular squat would be. So half of it's a squat, the other half is a nice little hamstring adductor stretch that you're getting there. But here we're testing out all that mobility in the hips as we get into that position. 
All right, coming back down to the mat, we're gonna do a little shin box windshield wiper here. So you're gonna sit with one foot in toward the thigh, the other leg internally rotated to the back. Hip up nice and high, getting the glutes engaged. Slide the legs so that they're parallel and then shift so the opposite leg comes in toward the opposite thigh. Sitting back down and then raising back up from there. This is a nice little glute exercise here. We're getting hip internal and external rotation and being able to strengthen ourselves in those positions coming up from there is a very important thing. Once again, if you need, you can sit in front of a post or a wall here to help pull yourself up in this position and work on that hip extension to make it a little bit easier for you. All right, next we're gonna incorporate that shin box into a half get up. So we're gonna pull into from a straddle sit here, go into our shin box position and then come up to standing from there. So it takes a second here, think about it, come into our straddle position, bring the inside of the foot toward that inner thigh, swing back into hip or internal rotation, hip up, come to a half kneeling position and stand up from there. Swing the leg back through, and then back into our shin box and back into our straddle. Straddle to shin box, hip up, swing the leg around, stand up, reverse that leg back, come back around all the way into our shin box and then back to our straddle sit once again. If this one's a little weird at first, take your time, just kind of work through the coordination. You'll get it, I promise. Very good. And from there, we're gonna transition into a little bit of upper body work here. So now we're going into a full flexion push-up. Start though in a good tall plank position. Tight butt, tight quads, shoulder blades rolled down and back on the upper back. As you push up into the full press here, what I want you to do is actively go into flexion of the spinal column. So my scapula are protracting on my shoulders, on, on my rib cage there and my abs should get a nice tight flex in that top position. You can see that rounded curvature of my spinal column in the top. That is the flexion position that I want, but you notice that my butt doesn't change. That stays flexed the whole time. So that's keeping tension throughout. Now, if you can't do push-ups from the ground, do this elevated on a surface. Put your hands on a step, put your hands on the couch, put your hands on a countertop, whatever you need to adjust the height but don't do bent knee push-ups, that's not a good sub. Okay, from there, we're gonna do a tricep extension. So put those parallel arms out front there, 90 degrees at the elbow, so the elbow sits right under the shoulder, tight abs, tight butt, so a nice solid plank position, and then you're gonna spread the mat. So here I'm thinking of pushing the mat down and away from me, and I can actually feel it stretching as I push. The key is that I keep my elbows in toward my rib cage the whole time, even as I extend the arms. Once again, if this one is too challenging from the floor, elevate your hands on the surface of a couch, arm of couch, you know, countertop, once again, whatever you need to, to make it a little less difficult performing from the floor. But keep those elbows in, keep the shoulder blades on the back here, Keep the abs tight, keep the glutes tight. No sagging backs, okay? All right, now coming down to the floor, engage the glutes so that you're pinning your pelvis to the mat here. My toes are touching the floor. This isn't a Superman. My abs are engaged. I have a nice Y shape with my arms reaching out long overhead. You'll notice that I'm kind of rotating my palms up toward the ceiling. That's because I want my shoulder in external rotation when I'm in the overhead position here. Now, keep thinking about the flex of the glutes. You're gonna use that and the abdomen to stabilize and base off in this position. So the stronger you can flex the abs and the glutes, the better off we're gonna be here and the less you'll actually feel your low back doing much because that's not really what's working to stabilize. It's more about the glutes and the pelvis being in a good position. Adjust as needed. Make sure you can hold that position with the glutes in tension. If you lose that, just take your second to reset.
And from here, we're gonna go into an archer push-up. So you'll notice that I have my fingertips pointed out. What I'm doing is shifting my body from side to side and almost thinking of spreading the floor apart between my hands. The key is my elbow on the side that is that I'm shifting towards. So I want to keep my elbow in toward my ribs. I don't want that elbow to flare at all. I want to make sure that it comes down and in as I bend the arm. The pressure is spread between those arms still. So as one arm is pushing, the other is bending to lower me in. And that is where we get that archer name. We need a tight core here, so keep the glutes flexing, keep the quads tight, keep the abs engaged. We shouldn't once again see any saggy backs here. And if you need to, you can also do this one from the countertop. Make sure you have enough space on it, of course. All right, coming down to the belly once again, engage the glutes, pinning the mat, and we're gonna go into a swimmer here. So we wanna swim the arms up overhead, palms touching one another, thumbs back, extend the arms fully, and then swing them down, back, low by the hips, and pull through. Try not to let the hands touch the floor at all. So we have a nice arched position from the upper back, but our base is once again in the pelvis, being engaging through the glutes to the floor. The abs are engaged against the floor as well, so it's not that my abs are not working here. They are to help stabilize from the bottom. So swing those arms around. We're gonna test that shoulder mobility. Here's a little upper back work here. And think about the actual scapula, the shoulder blade, helping lift your chest from the floor the whole time. We wanna use the upper back musculature, use those spinal erectors to keep you in a nice posture here and stabilize. All right, coming into a tall plank position, roll those shoulder blades down and back, elbows rotate toward the thighs, tight butt, tight stomach. We're going into a mountain climber. One leg is gonna push while the other leg pulls. So we want two actions going on from the lower body here. Push and pull, think of push and pull. And that is gonna help keep you stabilized better as we switch legs here. So we wanna minimize shift as much as possible, keep everything in tension, and use the push and pull action to do that stabilization. So the glutes are engaging on one side while the hip flexors engage on the other side. My armpits are tight and I'm holding a nice solid position here. Those abs might be burning, they might start to fatigue on you, so rest as needed, but do the best you can. All right, make your way up to standing. We're gonna work single leg here and test your balance again a little bit. If you need, stand next to a wall to help yourself out here. But we're doing single leg deadlifts. What I want you to do is drive the knee out front so we have one leg in flexion while the other leg is extended through the floor. Three points of contact on the foot that balanced, so you should know those by now. And then we're extending the leg to the back. What I want you to do is reach that leg as straight as you can get it. And we're trying to go about level from the shoulder through the ankle there as we reach back transitioning back into that knee out front high hip flexion position. So as I reach back, glutes are engaging, hamstrings are engaging. I'm focused on keeping my knee in line with the smallest or middle toes there. And if you're challenged with your balance, once again, come back to the foot. Make sure that there's three points of contact there as you're working. All right, and transition to the other side here. So set a good base. Once again, seeing if you can maintain balance the whole time here. Knee comes out front into flexion. I extend to the back. Another big thing here is I wanna maintain as much as I can parallel to the floor. So I'm trying not to rotate at all around anything. I wanna keep my chest squared up to the floor. And I'm trying to minimize any shifting or rotation in the movement as I do it.
All right, coming back to the floor here, we're gonna do what I call a rock back push-up. So we're lowering in for a regular push-up, but then we're shifting our weight back so our butts sit towards our heel, our arms fully extend here. We're getting the lats engaged. We wanna keep those elbows rotated in toward our ribs the whole time, even as we extend the arms. And we're hovering the knees, never setting our weight down there, but then coming back in for that full push-up. So it's almost like a squat, up against the floor there, mixed with the push-up at the same time. Something along those lines. But we're gonna feel a nice smooth transition from one to the next. So pushing up with the legs into the push-up and then pushing back with the arms into the squat and keeping that transition moving. All right, I know those shoulders may be feeling a little bit, but plant those arms parallel again, 90 degrees at the elbow, and walk into a nice high hip position with the legs, wherever you can walk those toes in, feet parallel to one another. We're pushing up through the floor with our forearms as much as we can. We wanna think of drawing our chest toward our shins, and we're holding this dolphin position here. So you might feel a lot of activation through the back of the armpit, the triceps, the upper back. That is exactly what we want here. You want to feel that. You might also be blocked a little bit by your calves and hamstrings being tight in this position. So if that's challenging you, that's okay. Know that. Just go where you can to hold this position. Now one big thing we want to look at is the arm positioning. We don't want those elbows to start flaring wide. So use your mat as a guidance because we do want them to stay parallel. We don't want the hands to come together. That's a common mistake in this one. Don't let those hands clasp. All right, bring it on down. Next, we're going into a bird dog here. So we're on all fours and we're bringing the opposite knee and elbow together in the middle. So everything comes into flexion and then fully extending out with the glutes tight, with the quads tight. You'll notice my low back again does not arch. So I want tightness through the glutes and quads, but I don't want to feel that movement of my pelvis at all. So I shouldn't feel my low back arching at all in this position as I work. Another thing to check is that you're centered up. You don't want to feel yourself leaning over toward the arm that's planted or toward the leg. You want to be balanced right between those two as you work. With my arm, I have my thumb to the sky so that my shoulders are in a little bit of external rotation and in a nice stable position here. You might be feeling those obliques working some, those abs working some, that's all good stuff. All right, we're gonna be switching sides here to the other side now. One thing that'll help with your balance in this position is the shoulder stability. So we do wanna make sure the arm that is planted has the shoulder blade rolled down and back with the elbow rotated in toward the rib cage. If it is out away from you, you're not gonna be stable. You're gonna be flopping around in there. So make sure you rotate and tighten up that shoulder stability here in this position. And again, center up, feel that full flexion and extend out without arching the back. All right guys, we're almost there. We got about three minutes left. That means we've almost burnt probably two to three Christmas cookies at this point. All right, we're doing a single leg glute bridge. In this one, I want you to drive your knee towards your chest on one side with the heel close to the butt on the leg that's planted on the floor. Three points of contact from that foot. First metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel. Drive straight down through the ground. Keep those shoulder blades rolled down and back as much as possible. And almost think of connecting your shoulders to your glutes. That's gonna help keep our core engaged. And once again, similar to the glute bridge we started with, we wanna make sure that the lumbar spine is coming down flat to the mat as we work here. So that is a very important key, is that the lumbar spine comes down flat every time we lower in. When we go back up for hip extension there, we wanna make sure the knee stays in line with the small toes or at least the middle toe on that side. Two, 
one, and we're switching sides. So plant that foot, heel close to the butt, knee opening toward the small toes, three points of contact from the foot, abs engaged, so we come down flat to the mat, and shoulder blades in a good position. You got 45 seconds on this one. Enjoy, you're almost there. All right, and our very last position here, our last minute is a supine low hold. So we're rolling those shoulder blades down and back. Pick your butt up for a second and flex it, and then put your butt back down to the floor flexed. Here, I am elevating my heels just a centimeter or two off of the mat. I'm hovering as low as I can, maintaining a pillar through my body here. So upper back, rolled down and back with the shoulder blades, abs engaged, glutes engaged. Now that doesn't mean that I won't have a slight space between my back and the mat in this position. I actually want that space. So I should be able to slide about a hand underneath my lumbar spine here. But other than that, everything is in tension. Every so often I tap the floor to make sure that I'm not high off the ground as I hover in this position. And that's very important. I wanna make sure that I'm staying in a nice straight line from my ankle through my shoulder. A lot of us stabilize from our hip flexors and we'll try and keep the legs higher rather than using the glutes. And you guys have done it. All right, and there you guys have it. As promised, a quick, fast moving 25 minute workout that got your full body engaged, all body weight stuff, and you should have had some stuff burning, maybe a good sweat going at this point in time. If you guys enjoyed this workout, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below, sharing it with a friend, and leaving a comment so that I know you enjoyed it. Or if you have any questions, feel free to drop those down below in the comments as well. And like I said, share this one with a friend. You know that they had some extra Christmas cookies as well this year. Just because we may not all be gathering together doesn't mean those cookies aren't getting sent via the postal service. So come on now, jump on it. And if you guys have not yet, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance, which includes fun little workouts like this. So take advantage of it. Welcome to the Stronghold Army, guys. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will catch you next week.